Hi guys, Mr. Anderson here for Science Lab 7, and today we're going to be talking about the scientific method. Now you might be asking, what, what is the scientific method? Well, let me tell you, the scientific method is a way that we uh, solve problems using a series of steps to make sure we get the correct answer, our true answer. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about the scientific method. Uh, let me give you a definition here. The definition, please write this down. The definition for the scientific method is a series of steps used to solve problems in an orderly way. So today we're going to be looking at a five-step scientific method. Now, if you look on the internet, you're going to find places that have fewer steps than that. You're going to find places that say there's more steps than that. But really, um, it's all the same steps. Sometimes they just combine some of them or they break some of them up into more steps, but here we're going to be using a five-step scientific method. So let's take a look at the first step. Now the first step is to make observations and ask a question. Now you might be saying, hey, Mr. Anderson, that sounds like two steps, and it kind of is, but we're going to bundle those together because really those two steps for us scientists go hand in hand. So you make observations about your environment, and you're doing that all the time. All day, every day, you're making observations about your, about your environment because you're using your senses, right? You have five senses, you use them all. And in case you forget, forget like what your senses are, very simple, you use your hand, right? And, and first you take your thumb, and you're gonna put it in your ear, and that's gonna represent our sense of hearing, right? I, I could hardly hear you because I got my thumb in my ear. But yeah, that's your sense of hearing. Then you're gonna take your index finger, and you're gonna put it on your eye. Careful not to poke yourself in the eye. Okay, put it on your eye, and that's your sense of sight, absolutely. And then you take your middle finger, right, and you're gonna put it on your nose, not up your nose, just on your nose. And that's your sense of smell, right? And then you're gonna take your ring finger there, you're gonna put it on your tongue, and that's your sense of taste, of course. And then you can kind of tap your chin with your pinky finger, and that's your sense of touch. So those are your five senses. If you ever forget, real simple, just use your hand. All right, so here's the thing. You use your senses all the time to observe your environment. Let's get a definition for what observation is. An observation is any information that we gather by using our senses. And you use your senses, like I said, all the time, right? You observe your environment. Things happen around you, and you observe them. And then sometimes it doesn't make sense, or sometimes, you know, it's just something weird, and you have a question about it, all right? So we make observations, and we ask questions, all right? And when we ask questions, we want to find out the answer, I think. A lot of times, we want to find out the answer. And so we're, that's step one. We're going to move on to step two. Now, step two is to do a little research, right? Try to understand your question a little bit better. Are there things that I know about that question? So let me give you an example of an observation. Let's say you have a radio at home, or a stereo, like this. And you go to turn it on, and nothing happens. There's no sound. Oh my goodness, why is there no sound out of this radio? That's a question, right? We made an observation, hey, there's no sound, I don't hear anything, and then we ask a question. How come? Why is there no sound? What's going on? All right, so you go to your second step. Step two of our scientific method is to research, right? Do some research. Uh, and when we do research, it's some sort of knowledge building activity. Uh, we do research to kind of gather some information. Now, sometimes that research is very formal, right? You go and open some books, you do search on the internet, you're trying to find out more information about your question, all right? And sometimes that research is, is less formal, right? You just kind of think back to things you know. Hey, I wonder, you know, what's going on with this thing? Uh, I know for it to work, for this radio to work, right? For me to hear it, you know, uh, it's got to be plugged in. Uh, that's kind of important, right? All right, so let's move on to step three of our scientific method. Step three of our scientific method is to state an explanatory hypothesis. Now, your explanatory hypothesis, here's your definition, take a look at that. Explanatory hypothesis is a statement that explains a group of related observations. A statement that explains a group of related observations. Sometimes we call it an educated guess. But it's really our explanation of what we're seeing, right? There's something that doesn't compute, something doesn't make sense, something in our environment is a little off. And we have a question. Right? We think back to how things work and maybe come up with why we think it works, our explanation. And that is your hypothesis. So I looked at my radio, oh my goodness, it's not working, I don't know what's going on. And so my hypothesis might be, you know what, I know it needs to be plugged in to work, I think maybe it's not plugged in. All right. 
So then, oh my goodness, this next step is extremely important. I cannot stress how important this next step is. The next step, step number four. You, you think you know what it is? You think you know what it is? Step four is to perform an experiment. Absolutely, extremely important. Here's the thing. If we stop at step three, if we stop at hypothesis, oh my goodness, we can end up believing some pretty silly things, right? Let me give you an example. People used to believe that, that flies, like maggots, like little baby flies, maggots, used to come from rotting meat. Like rotting meat just kind of turned into maggots. You know, like it was meat and then poof, it was maggots. And that's just what they believed. And, and they believed it because they made observations about their environment, right? And they noticed that, hey, if you leave meat out, uh, then, there's, then there's maggots. There's meat and, and then there's maggots. And so they thought, well, the meat turned into maggots. And it wasn't until later on when somebody said, hey, let's do an experiment. Let's move past step three, move on to step four, and let's do an experiment. So he did, right? He had two plates of meat. One of them he covered. And one of them he left open. And, of course, flies would buzz around, land on the meat, do their fly thing, lay eggs, right? Yeah. And then after a while, right, those eggs would hatch. Maggots would come out and eat the meat and crawl around, do their maggot thing. But the meat that was under glass, no maggots. Why? Because the flies couldn't get to it. Okay? So that experiment's extremely important, right? So here's our radio, right? It's not working. Oh my goodness, why is it not working? I think it's not working because it's not plugged in. Let me do an experiment to find out. Oh, let me follow this cord. Uh, it's not plugged in! Oh my goodness, let me plug that in. Let me plug that in down here. All right, so it's plugged in. And there you go, that's my radio. Let me, let me turn that down a little bit, let me turn that down. Okay, so we perform experiments. Here's your definition. An experiment is an activity designed to test a hypothesis. So we do experiments to find out if our hypothesis was right or wrong, all right? And, and sometimes our hypothesis is proven true by the experiment, and sometimes it's not, and that's okay. Which brings us to our fifth and final step, which is to form conclusions, okay? What do we conclude? What did we find out by doing the experiment? That's what conclusions are, all right? So your conclusion is a statement that says if the experiment supports the hypothesis or not, right? Either the experiment supports the hypothesis and it's true, or the experiment disproves the hypothesis and, and our hypothesis is false, which is okay. Like, if, if I were to pull on this cord and I find out, oh, you know what, it's plugged in, then I wonder why I'm not hearing music. Well, I also need to know that the volume needs to be turned up, so do another experiment, check the volume. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So you, do, you use the scientific method probably every day without even really thinking about it. It's just an orderly way to solve problems. We go through certain steps to find out if something is true or not. Now, I hope you get a chance to go out in your world in your science class and do the scientific method. All right, this is Mr. Anderson from Science uh, Lab 7. We'll see you next time.